Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, I'm Robert, talking about Deus M Machina, which allows a smartphone to provide contextual functionality by tapping it to a device. So traditionally, we interacted with the devices by physically walking up to them and interacting with buttons, switches, and knobs. And this style of interaction is you know, pretty traditional, it's familiar, it's intuitive, and it's intentional. Um, but lately, though, we've got the Internet of Things. Uh, the trend has been moving towards centralizing control on your mobile device, seemingly with a special app for every single one of your devices, every single gadget. So you know you've got an app for your smart thermostat, you've got an app for your Wi-Fi router, your internet-enabled printer, your mesh network light bulb, and so on. Many of these IoT devices lack any sort of physical interface at all. They rely exclusively on remote access. See, uh, this Chromecast audio I've got up here, it's a great example, there's no physical buttons at all on it. You're supposed to control it entirely with a phone app. And you know, although these apps offer an, offer an interface that's often a lot richer than traditional physical interfaces, but there's something missing now. You can't just walk up and use these devices like you could before. You've got to like, you know, go, go on your phone digging for an app and then launch that and get it configured. So what we're showing is DSM Machina, a technique that allows phones to detect appliances on contact and then summon appropriate interactive functionality. Our technique is based on electromagnetic sensing. Specifically, we sense the electromagnetic noise that's given off by electrical appliances. Notably, our technique doesn't require the, the appliances to be instrumented at all. We simply rely only on the noise that they already give off. So following a grand tradition, I'm also going to attempt a live demo. Um, yeah. So right here, I have a, I have a phone, um, which we've modified by adding an antenna inside, like you can see on screen. So there's a little copper foil antenna behind here. And to that, we've attached basically a sensor board that incorporates an amplifier circuit and microcontroller. And I'll talk a bit more about the details later. We use the microcontroller's ADC to sample some baseband radio signals. OK, so right here, you can see this is actually a live view of my, of my phone. So um, you know, all the things I'm doing in here is just casting directly to, the, uh, to, to my computer. Um, and you can see here is the, seg is the signal. This is sort of the background signal. So I wave it around. You know, there's not really a whole lot of EM back uh, background because I've already sort of calibrated that out. But if I touch it to some objects, so, well, what happened? Uh, so like this internet router that I've got sitting on the table, there's a bit of a signal there, right? Um, and you know, this, uh, this sort of Wi-Fi printer over here, different signal. This light bulb, actually, has a very distinctive electromagnetic signature. Even my smartphone. Uh, has a little bit of a, uh, an electrical signature. So, so every device that I tap is going to have its own unique signature. Like this camera right here, has, the LCD puts off a lot of EM. So we can actually, what I can do here is uh, sort of switch this to a classifier view, show you this classifying. So there's the printer. You know, we've got like a light bulb over here. E even sort of trained it on my, uh, on, my, on my trackpad here. So all these devices can be detected on contact. And you notice, basically, that EM field doesn't extend very far. If I'm close to the object but not really touching it, it doesn't really trigger. So we can actually do some really interesting stuff with this. So for example, I've got this light bulb here. If I actually tap my, my phone to the light bulb, I get a light bulb control app. I can turn that on. OK. Well, I could turn it on. Eh. Demos, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, so I, I can turn on sort of like a light bulb control or, in theory, um, or Another example is if I've got a document pulled up on my phone, so to do contextual stuff, right? I can actually tap it to here and get like a little printer icon. If I tap that printer icon, I'm assuming the Wi-Fi is probably down. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> so that I can get the printer icon, and that can allow me to actually print to that document, right? So I detect that. That's contextual. But the document, you can do other things with it. So if I tap it to my phone, my computer, for example, a different icon shows up. And this little icon means send to device, send to the computer. So I can do things like um, you know, either print to the device when I'm near it, or I can send it to, to my computer. And notably, I can have a whole bunch of these different actions, but I don't have to have any space on, the, on my screen for that. That's all contextual, right? And I don't have to like, explicitly walk into a bunch of menus just to do it. I can just say, OK, I just walk up to the device I want to use and you know, go for it. OK, so that's the demo.
So now let me just sort of go briefly through related work. Um, so a lot of previous systems, uh, you know, even commercial approaches, have sort of proposed uh, tagging appliances so that they work with mobile phones. Um, this is, for example, using QR codes, NFC tags, RFID, so on and so forth. But what this, the important thing about this is it requires appliances to already be tagged and instrumented. And that's a significant barrier to adoption. Because if you say, OK, well, uh, all of these devices have to be tagged already in order for you to use them, if an untagged device is actually kind of useless to you, you have to, you know, there's no advantage for that. So closer to our work are systems that detect uninstrumented appliances. Uh, for example, proximity aware controls on the left, they used a, basically a, a tightly calibrated room where all the objects are predefined, and so the location of the phone within that room determines sort of what, uh, what uh, interfaces would show up. Um, snap to it presented at Kai last year, is a little bit closer yet, which uses a phone camera to detect uninstrumented uh, appliances and presented interface. So sort of a similar idea, but with a very different sensing technique. For the technical approach of sensing electromagnetic signatures, a lot of past systems have actually tried to use that for different pro uh, purposes. For example, EMI Spy used a 100 kilohertz sampling rate, and that allowed them to detect different users touching different LCD panels. Uh, MSense, on which our technical approach is based, uh, was a smartwatch mounted EM sensor for sensing objects that users touched or interacted with, and that was used for activity recognition. Okay, so let's talk about the implementation then. Um, like I showed you earlier, our hardware consists of this copper antenna that we sort of inlay on the back of the phone. Um, now, in a practical device, this could actually just be replaced with the metal chassis, for example. A lot of phones are made out of magnesium, aluminum, or just plain uh, you know, metal, which could be used, uh, which can transmit the uh, electromagnetic signatures. Or it could be, or we could attach our, our sensor basically to a suitably large built-in antenna, like the NFC antennas that are often built into the backplane of some new devices. This antenna is connected to an amplifier circuit that's on a custom PCB, and that amplifies our passive EM signature that we're, uh, that we're getting from the antenna, feeds it to the ADCs in a 84 megahertz ARM microcontroller. And now note, this is, this is a $4 microcontroller. There's nothing special about it. Um, it's really basically an off-the-shelf part. This microcontroller has two ADCs on it. We actually feed the antenna signature signal to both of them. We overclock that ADC to about two megahertz each, and then we, we actually uh, time them slightly offset in time so that they, they, uh, they uh, sample in alternate cycles. That gives us basically a four megahertz sampling rate. So in total, by Nyquist sampling, we can get up to two megahertz of clean signature. And that gives us a huge bandwidth to work with. That's how we can distinguish a lot of different devices. Our sampling rate is actually so high that we need to offload data copying to the DMA engine on the device. Um, and once there, basically the chip uh, periodically pulls that buffer off, the CPU on the chip, um, performs a fast Fourier transform, uh, again, all on the microprocessor, to convert that into a frequency spectrum. And then we compress that by removing the, uh, the phase information that's not useful for our classification. We then stabilize the EM signature using a maximum filter over time, and then send it as raw frames to the phone over a USB serial connection. And of course, in a real system, you know, we'd use something like a built-in sensor hub that's connected directly to the phone CPU for these kinds of computations. Um, to classify each incoming frame, we built a classification engine that uh, runs directly on the phone itself, the phone's uh, main CPU. Here's a list of the features that we derived from the raw data frame. Um, we use a, basically a, an SVM classifier to actually classify these objects. Uh, it's a one, one versus one binary classifiers for every pair uh, of objects. Um, performs basically voting to determine which one is the most likely candidate. It takes about 45 milliseconds per frame for our 17 class classifier that I'll talk about a little later. Um, we actually stabilize that classification by taking the mode, the most frequent classification over the past second of data, so that we don't you know, flip classifications if some errant noise pops out. Um, after we get the classification, we can then pop that up one layer to the Android intent framework. And so this is built on standard Android. The software itself, there's no kernel modifications to this time. Um, we can launch a full, we can basically broadcast an intent that carries with it the object class that, we, that was detected. And these can be received system wide. Uh, so for example, we can launch a full screen app. So if say, you know, you have a Linksys router, you download the Linksys app on your phone, and then it could register with the system, say, okay, every time I receive a router notification message, maybe pop up this app or a router of this specific model. Broadcasts are system-wide. Apps can install basically their own broadcast receivers to, uh, to, for custom functionality. But for the contextual charms, those little, you know, the printer icons that I showed you earlier, um, we actually provide a library called libcharm. And that provides the unified UI, the little popover icons, as well as an object recognition system, um, a registration system, rather, for objects to support these charms. So applications, what they do is they just register a verb 
that they support. So um, I'm capable of printing. I'm capable of sending files. I'm capable of you know, uh, transmitting media or casting media. And then uh, appliances also register those verbs as well. Every time you touch an appliance, we take the intersection of the supported verbs, and we present icons appropriate to the actions. So this is a sort of a, an appliance agnostic approach, where we don't really care what the exact appliance is, as long as it supports the actions that we rec uh, request. OK, so that's the software stack. Uh, to validate our system, we carried out an evaluation of the system's accuracy. Uh, in preparation for the study, we selected 17 appliances and collected EM signatures for each one. Uh, in order for us to achieve some temporal stability, we collected this data over two separate days. In all, we collected 20,000 signatures, then trained a classifier that runs directly on our phone. And in this video, you can see our devices along with their characteristic EM signatures and our classifier detecting each one of these devices. I'll just like run that through. You can see some of the signatures are, are smaller than others. Um, certainly some devices are better, better shielded, require lower power, et cetera, but they still all give off some sort of characteristic signature. So uh, what we did was we, we did a user study with 10 users, uh, 30 minutes per study, and we used a pre-trained classifier to recognize objects as they moved around the space. 10 users tapped on our appliances spread out over five different areas. We collected the output of the pre-trained classifier and used that to determine accuracy. We did not do any post hoc classification at all. So um, this was all done on device, whether it was correct or not. Our results show that we can classify 17, all 17 objects at an aggregate of 98.8% accuracy. 14 of our objects actually achieved perfect accuracy throughout our study, and we didn't find any temporal effects over the three separate days, nor any user-specific effects or effects from our different zones. And here, you know, if you like confusion matrices, there they are. The legend uh, for all of these dev different devices can be found in the paper. All right, so finally, I'd like to close off by showing you some more applications um, that, uh, of our system. I showed you a couple in the live demo sort of briefly. So here's a bunch of different uh, full screen applications that we can launch. So here, you know, for example, we can control a thermostat and you, know, you get a, a much better thermostat experience than the little buttons on, on the front. Uh, here, this is a projector application. Now this one actually uh, works for real. We reverse engineered the Crestron control uh, protocol that the, that the projector uses so we can actually send control commands to it, change the, you know, the input source and other properties. Um, here is a door lock application. So this is a magnetic uh, access control door lock. Um, and what we can actually show is uh, a history of all the people who've logged into it. This is a mock-up. Um, and uh, add people to the access list. For TV application, you know, you can touch the TV and use it like a remote. Maybe you've forgotten your remote, but you've got your smartphone handy. Uh, and the Wi-Fi router application. So this is, you know, being able to touch it to the Wi-Fi router and actually control the settings. This is Beats, you know, typing in like 192.168.11 into a web browser. So for a fridge, you know, we can access different properties of the fridge, yeah, query its status. And again, the sort of light bulb, that, light bulb this, one, this one actually works. <laughs> um, you know, so basically being able to change the color of the light. So it's, it's like having a super light switch, right, with this kind of thing. All right, and then we also have uh, a set of contextual charms. Um, so if I touch the printer, you know, I get a little charm that pops up. It actually prints the device, right? And a little while later, you know, some, uh, basically the printed, uh, the printed files come out. Um, so this is another example with touch it on the, on the monitor. I can get like a little send to file thing. So you know, I, I can approve that, uh, that file transfer. This comes up. This is all real, by the way. There's, this, all these were filmed basically with an actual working implementation. There's no mocking in this full stack implementation here. The other thing we can do, so a, a computer supports both receiving files, it also supports uh, clipboard pasting. So I can select a little bit of text, and actually I get a second contextual charm once I've selected some text that's paste. And so what I can do now is I can just go onto my computer and just paste that text. Because this is a case where I register two verbs. And so for, uh, this is a case where one verb actually applies to two different devices. So this is a cast verb. And so if I've got some document on the screen, I cast it to a TV, cast, some TV uh, cast the video, or I can cast some audio to this Chromecast audio. All right, and that's basically it. Thank you very much for listening.